Hello everyone, it's Stephanie from Inkspire Me. I have hope you're having a wonderful Valentine's Day. I just came on a little bit early to get set up and make sure that I am live in the right spot. So we can wait for some others to join while I do that. Is everybody having a great day celebrating your loved ones? I've had a relatively quiet day. I worked for a little bit this morning and then my husband and I went out for um, lunch. We went to The Mule in Hamilton. If you've never gone before, I strongly recommend it. It was very, very good Mexican. Um, so yeah, so we did that and then I uh, came home and spent some time with the kids and now I am here to craft with you. So if you're watching, make sure to say hi. I'd love to see your comments. Let me know that you're here. I mean, you can see everything all right. Looks good on my end, but I can never be too sure. like we are good and it's 7 30 so I'm gonna go ahead and get started so um, tonight I thought I would pop on it's been a really long time since I've done a Facebook live video and I wanted to show you the new paper pumpkin kit which I just received today this is the January kit that um, sorry excuse me this is the February kit I can't I don't even know what month we're in February 2020 lovely day um, and so there's a few changes to paper pumpkin that I wanted to go over with you first of all you'll notice that paper pumpkin boxes are now wrapped in cello and what that means is that your labels are no longer stuck to the box. If you're like me, you like to keep these handy dandy boxes for other things. And some of them are quite pretty when you have the specialty boxes. So now you don't have a label wrecking that. The other change um, is that it no longer folds open from the front. It used to be a, a, a flap here that you would lift up. Now it tucks in, there's a little notch here to make it easy to open. So that is another change to the box. So let's go ahead and open up the kit. I haven't looked at it yet. As you saw, the, uh, the seal was still on there. So when you open the box, the first thing you notice is a celebration, lovely coordination. So this is just telling us that this month's kit, the February kit, coordinates with the stamp set that you can earn during celebration. Happy birthday to you. I don't know how well you can see that on the camera. So it's this stamp set here that you can earn during celebration. If you don't know what celebration is, celebration is our biggest promotion of the year and you can earn exclusive products for every $60 that you spend. So if you spend $60, you're going to earn one item. If you're going to spend $120, you're going to earn two items, 180, three items, and so on and so forth. Um, but you can earn this happy birthday to you set free. This is the celebration brochure that is currently available to you. And you can see that there's some adorable things that you can earn. So the gang's all mirror, the Lily Impressions Designer Series paper, um, you've got some Baker's Twine and Sequins. There's the Happy Birthday to You stamp set that coordinates with this paper pumpkin kit. There is a card kit. There's some more paper that coordinates with our bees in the mini catalog. There's some sentiments. Um, another stamp set, a punch that coordinates with the stamp set. Um, this is a whole suite of products, so this is a stamp set and an embossing folder. And then, of course, there is an exclusive host set that you can only get when you host during celebration, I'm sorry, which runs until March 31st. So if you love these cute little ladybugs and you'd like to get your hands on it, let me know and we can arrange either a in-home party or an online party to help you earn that. 
If you don't currently have a Sailor Bration brochure and you would like to get your hands on one, leave me a comment and I will reach out to you to get your address so that I can get that to you. So let's go ahead and get into the project. So every paper pumpkin kit comes with a stamp set and ink. So you really don't need to have supplies on hand. Um, the very first time you get a paper pumpkin kit, you're also going to get an acrylic block. It's not quite as thick as this, but it will be the same surface size. This is a D block. And this is what your stamps adhere to so that you can finish the product, um, sorry, project. So your very first kit that you get when you subscribe to Paper Pumpkin, you get a block and then your subsequent kits come like this, which is just the stamp set and the ink and then the project they're in. So this is the stamp set for the month. And again, I don't know how well the camera is going to pick this up with the glare from the light. So we have um, what looks like a rose blossom. We've got some buds. We have lovely congratulations. Have a wishes, celebrations, birthday, your a great reason to and then we have a cake image and what would be the cream filling in there sorry I just realized that was off camera so here's the stamp set so these stamps are what we're going to use to create the project and the ink that we're going to use is one of the in colors for 2019-2021 called Rococo Rose. It's a lovely dusty rose color. And here we go for the project. I should mention that you don't have to have the coordinating stamp set that's from celebration in order to create the project it's just something that would complement it nicely so here is the project itself so it is a kit that contains supplies for nine cards and envelopes so there's three designs three of each and i'm going to go ahead and open this up so you can see more so if you're um, thinking about a subscription kit to help you craft this is one that you want to get want to look at getting um, because it comes with everything from your um, embellishments, my apologies, embellishments, dimensionals, all your cardstock and papers that you're going to need to create your project. So I'm just going to go ahead and open this up. Okay. So once you open your project kit, The, the cover page is also your instructions. So if you can just look at something visually and duplicate it, that's great. If not, if you do need step-by-step, -step, if you open that up, it actually goes through step-by-step -step with photographs as well as written instructions to help you complete the projects therein. And there is also, for the projects that may come with ribbon or twine, there's also a ruler at the bottom so that you can measure out the appropriate um, length of that ribbon or twine. So then, I'll show you. So here's one of the card backgrounds, and inside, oops, there's some tags in there. Inside, you can see that the card is white, so you can write in there no problem. It's already pre scored, so folding is quite simple. And then these are the tags that we're going to stamp with our sentiments. And I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but there is a rose gold border to those tags. This is the next set of card bases. So lovely stripes. And then again, white inside with the, um, the score line already there. We've got some more tags. And then the next project is a little bit different. So it's still a card base, but you can see that it's got a different fold. So there is a score line here and there is a slit that's cut out because this little tab is going to go into the slit once it's folded to create a little envelope. Hi, Carissa. All right, and then of course, each card has a matching envelope that coordinates We've got some 
These are foam letters, also in rose gold. Some more envelopes. There we go. We've got some backgrounds. So you can see there's already an image printed on that background and they've already been die cut. So you don't have to worry about having tools to make that happen. These ones also have been die cut, so they just punch out. So that center is going to punch out when you're ready to use it. And then again, we've got a punch out and an image already printed to make it nice and easy. So let's go ahead and get started. And I think I'm going to do, I'm going to start with this one here because it's nice and, and simple. So we want to get the burgundy background. And we're going to get one of those scalloped punch outs. All right. The kit also comes with adhesive. If you've never used glue dots before, that's what these are. So you would just peel a glue dot off the backing, stick it to your project, and then the top comes off to create a double sided dot ready to stick your project to the paper. Okay, so we're going to start by folding the base in half and you just give it a good press to make it nice and smooth. If you have our bone folder that works as well. You can also use the handle of your scissors just to give it that nice sharp crease line. Next we are going to take our base and we're going to get stamping. So this card from the instructions it has the large flower base as well as the little buds and again if you wanted to use the step-by-step -step instructions you can do that so what I'm going to do is peel that off and it literally just sticks to the block it's there's no magic, no fuss, no muss. You don't have to play with it. And then when you're done with it, you just peel it off, put it back on your plastic paper and it's ready to go for the next time. So then I'm gonna open our ink spot here. Now this is designed to be a single use ink. It's not designed for long-term. We do have these colors in our full size ink pads. And then of course, never open when you want it to. There we go. So because I have a small surface ink pad and a large stamp, the easiest way to ink that is to keep the stamp turned upside down and to tap your ink pad over the surface of it. That way you can see exactly where you're inking to make sure you've got it all. And when you're happy with the coverage, you're going to turn it over and you are going to stamp your image over the base here. Just give it a nice push and lift straight up. And I don't know how well you can see that. So the printed image that was behind the flower actually lines up with the outline. So you have some color to your leaves and your blossom there. So now we're going to just peel this off and we're gonna do the same thing with the buds. All right, so we're just gonna ink those up. And what I like about the photopolymer stamps or the clear stamps, you can see exactly where you're inking and where you're stamping to make sure you get that nice clean line. So that is our stamped image. Next, we're going to stick our image to the base using these Stampin' Dimensionals. So these are double-sided little foam hexagons. They peel off the back. You're going to stick to your base and I like to give it lots of support so I'm going to use a few of these. And 
And once you've got them all on, then you just peel off the backs. You can see they're staticky and sticking. Once you've got them all peeled off, they're sticky, and then you can just stick that to your card front. Give it a push, and there we go. So the card is pretty by itself without having anything else added to it, but of course we wanna dress it up a little bit more. So if we look again at the picture, it's got have a lovely birthday the lovely is one of these foam um, letters that we're going to use but we are going to stamp the have a end birthday using the stamp set so let's pull those out let's get our tags and we're going to use two of the smaller ones i think we're actually going to use this one here so let's pull out have a and birthday. And again, I'm just gonna pull that image off. So we're gonna do birthday first because I just happened to have that one in my hand. I'm gonna grab the ink. Which of course I can't open again. And it's really important when you're inking or when you're stamping not to rock your stamp back and forth because then you end up with um, halos around your image or a smeared image. So there's our birthday. Now let's do our have a. We're going to ink that up again. Firm down, firm up, and there we go. So there's our sentiment. And this just pops out. It's already cut for you. You just have to punch it out. And we're gonna stick that to the base first with our adhesive dots, which of course now I can't find. There they are. And I do find that um, a pair of stickers work really well to get these off the backing and you can be as generous as you need to be with these and once you've got those on there then again you just want to peel the back off to Reveal the sticky. You don't have to use the glue dots. If you have a tape runner or other adhesive product that you use, you can certainly do that. So then we're going to go about here. So then I'm just going to push that down on top and then I'm going to pull out the foam letters here and just like the Stampin' Dimensionals you're going to peel off the back and we're going to stick that right there and again I apologize for the dog and there we have an adorable card but no card is complete without some sort of bling so we're going to use the adorable little sequins that came with the card kit and we're gonna add some of those with the glue dots. And as a general rule of thumb, you want to do things in odd numbers. It's just more visually appealing. So in this case, I'm just going to use three. Uh, two, three. So again, we're gonna pick up a glue dot. And you're going to put that wherever you want to put it. So I'm going to put one here. And we're going to do one here. And another one over here. Oops. Sticking 
into my scissors. There. There. <laughs> All right. And then if we peel the back off. Now this is where your take your pick tool comes in handy. So if you don't have one of these, this is probably the best thing you could have in your arsenal. And actually I could be using it for the glue dots. But this end has a um, putty. It's like sticky tack, really. And it allows me to pick up things like little sequins, which can be finicky or stick to your nails. And it allows me to perfectly place that where I want it and doesn't pull back off. The other end here has this lovely little spatula end, which I'm sure that's not the technical term, but that's how I'm going to refer to it, which helps with picking those backs off. So again, another sequin and then our little spatula to pick the back off. And our sequin, which is upside down. And there we have it. So there is the first card from the kit created in a short amount of time, but will wow the recipient. Could also make a good Valentine's card for today if we change the have a lovely birthday sentiment to something else. We could do you're a great reason to celebrate or lovely by itself you could really do anything with it or if you have other stamp sets you could certainly do that so that is paper pumpkin in a nutshell now I did want to actually share with you something very exciting if you didn't see my blog post yesterday you're gonna want to head over to my website www.inkspireme.com to check that out as I posted the March paper pumpkin kit is actually very special so in March of 2020 paper pumpkin turned seven years old and to celebrate the kit is a little bit different. So the box itself is absolutely gorgeous and reminiscent of all things spring. But to celebrate the birthday, Stampin' Up! is not only giving the stamp set that is required to create the kit, but there will be an additional stamp set inside the kit. So to receive the March kit, you need to subscribe before March 10th. Sorry, I just had a, uh, a momentary brain lapse. Um, you need to subscribe by March 10th to get the March kit. So typically what happens is on March 11th, your payment processes and then the paper pumpkin ships usually a day later. And here in Canada, it is shipped by FedEx and it takes about two business days, give or take, to arrive. So this shipped on um, the 12th and it arrived to my door today. And like I said, it has everything you need to create the projects within. We do know that the March kit will be a card kit as well. And it's going to make you 12 cards, four different designs, three of each, and it's all going to be spring themed. The colors I listed out on my blog post yesterday, from the top of my mind, I'm going to say that the colors are basic gray, balmy blue, um, pear pizzazz, shaded spruce, calypso coral, so saffron. I wanna say grapefruit grove is in there and I think there might be one or two others, um, but very springy colors, nice and bright. Um, which again, if you're here in Canada, March still tends to be gray and brown. So having um, something a little more cheery to create is definitely going to be a bonus. So again, if you haven't checked that information out, I posted it on my website yesterday, www.inkspireme.com. And if you have any questions about Paper Pumpkin itself or about celebration, don't forget you can earn celebration awards with Paper Pumpkin as well. Um, 
I didn't actually talk about that, but we do offer not only the subscription service for Paper Pumpkin, but we also offer a prepaid option. And I don't think that's noted in the brochure, it's not. Um, so what that means is you can prepay for one, three, six, or 12 months upfront for Paper Pumpkin. You still have the advantages of being able to skip a month if there's a month that you think isn't going to be for you based on the teasers that they drop or if you know traditionally, let's say, um, let's say you, you don't do Halloween projects. Maybe you don't want the October kit because you know they're traditionally Halloween themed. Um, so you can skip those months. But if you subscribe or you, sorry, if you purchase a three, six or 12 month prepaid Paper Pumpkin subscription, you do earn yourself a celebration reward item as well. So there's a couple of advantages to that. So for March, if you think about it, if you purchase the three month prepaid subscription, you're not only getting a celebration item, but you're also getting the free stamp set for the Paper Pumpkin kit and then the additional stamp set to celebrate their birthday. So it's kind of a big deal. If you're on the fence, March is definitely a month that I think you should look into. But that is everything. I am about to head off to spend some more time with my family on this Valentine's Day. And I hope you all have a lovely weekend. Thanks for watching.